Today on the show, strategy plus action equals creating content that isn't boring. Great coaches and consultants like you have the ability to change people's lives and transform entire organizations. And your impact can often go far beyond the clients you work with. One of the reasons I love working with coaches and consultants is because of that ripple effect. This show is here to highlight your expertise and empower you with resources and new ideas to grow your business. Welcome to Strategy in Action. Eric Ryan is on the show today, and we have a blast talking about this idea of creating content that actually has some meat to it a little bit, some, you know, some creativity, some fun, some life really just some humanness to it that doesn't look like everything else that's out there, especially on LinkedIn. You know, he and I both, you know, are growing our businesses, putting out content there. And he's got this fantastic approach and and wonderful couple of shows that he does that are amazingly hilarious and uh, creative. But he's also helping his clients do that for themselves because we know that not everyone needs to have a five bourbon lunch show like he has for his interview shows. Um, but he keeps encountering people that, you know, he talks to about, you know, helping them with their business, with his digital agency. And he can feel their personality, their humor, the, just who they really are on these calls. And then he goes and looks at their content that's out there, whether it's video or written or anything else. And it's just flat. It's just like everything else. It's not like them. It's not like the person that he just had a conversation with, right? And that's what's kind of baffling to all, to to us both. But it's understandable as well. If If marketing isn't your thing, right? Even though you respond to the the humorous stuff or the fun stuff or whatever that may be, when it comes to creating it yourself, it's tough to go, okay, where do I start? How do I do this thing? And and that's really where he's helping folks is, is create that. So there isn't just a blank page with that. And then it's also to really nurture again, who they are and letting that come to life um, through video content specifically and guiding through that process and, you know, turning that into a whole bunch of content for the month. So that's, that's what we get into, you know, the fact that this idea of marketing is so accessible now that we really should be taking more chances, doing more with it because we have the opportunity to get in front of so many more eyeballs than than we ever could in the past. All right, let's jump in. America's sweetheart, mm-hmm. the Eric Ryan. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I, 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 honestly, greatest thing I've ever done. Well, yeah, obviously, <laughs> um, but you know, let's wait till the end of the episode and we'll see what you say then. <laughs> with, with our hairs in the same two boxes, you know what I mean. Like I don't think I don't think we even need to say anything. I think we can just sit here for an hour, make a promotional clip out of that, and this show will take off. Yeah. Do you? I think we've discussed this before, but do you blow dry? Or is just that a little, oh. just a tiny bit. In the more, it needs to air dry. If I blow dry, then it's just like interesting white man's fro. It's it's not good. Yeah. People always yeah. assume this takes a long time, but it's ninety percent blow dryer and hairspray. Nice. Like industrial strength, I imagine. Uh, you know what? The cheaper the shit, the better I found. If you buy stuff at a salon, because they don't want to do what I'm doing. They don't want 16 feet of height, right? So I'm going <laughs> against the grain. It will look normal. <laughs> That's right. I dig it. Yeah. Well, as much as everyone's just fascinating with with our hair, like I, I'm glad that we we address that right away, because otherwise they're going to be distracted. They're going to have questions through it's the whole thing. It's so in the room. We just got to get acknowledge it right off the bat. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here because I want to talk, uh, you know, non-boring content yeah. specifically on LinkedIn. Uh, right. If anybody has come across your videos that are out there, uh, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And oh. I hope anyone who hasn't, they rush out very quickly. <laughs> and you know, check them out. 12 people that have seen my videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. Just absolute magnificence in humor and craft and all of that. And Thank you. I think it, it baffles both of us that there that that is such an anomaly, not because those are good, but because 
anything humorous, anything original, creative seems to not exist much on LinkedIn, <laughs> especially no. in terms of video. Yeah. It's, it's shocking because like, you know, I say this all the time, but I thought marketing was going to be a lot more like Mad Men. Like we come up with great ideas and then have some drinks and go sleep with the secretaries and then somebody else executes on it and calls us geniuses. But it's marketing online is, you know, spreadsheets and AdWords, ads that don't get clicked on and blogs and white papers. And it's just, it's fascinating because I think if you get into marketing and advertising, you kind of want to be creative. Like, are we doing our best work here? Is anyone doing their best work? Because it's <laughs> trash, right? It's really bad. Everything's really, really bad. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's so interesting to go and even the people who say, you, you know, yes, I'm on board 100%. Like, yeah, it should be better. We Then, then we go in and, and it's the safest approach possible. Yeah. Don't want to offend. Not And, and we're not talking, we're, when we're talking about being funny and all this stuff, it isn't, you know, just to try to offend people. Like, I think people's mind just goes that way. Like, if, if you think, speak your mind and be original and creative, people's minds just go that way instantly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, it doesn't have to be that way. Well, I think we're solving for average. And in our head, the average is this person we've never met that's offended by everything, that doesn't like contractions, doesn't like laughing, doesn't like sex appeal or humor or wit. Like, it's just, we we think that this third invisible third party that we've never met is the person that we're advertising to. It's just simply not the case and it never has been, you know? So I don't know why we're, yeah. I mean, I know why you're afraid, cancel culture and everything else. Everyone, you know, to some degree, when I say everyone, five people say they don't like it. You're like, oh my God, that, that's not... <laughs> It's not everybody. It's a very small amount of people that might be offended by something. And like, you know, we're not doing anything wild, just an attempt at humor. An attempt at having a personality is out of the question, which is really strange, you know? Yeah. And it's it's kind of like the same dynamic I've I've seen, you know, working with, you know, in video and events and all that kind of stuff. It's 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 like a the CEO or whoever's running the the organization. It's their little crowd of people around them keeping you or anyone else away from them on their behalf, you know, like giving you the nose, giving you like, well, we can't do that. We can't do that. Like, well, did you, did you ask, you know, the CEO, well, you, you, you can't do that, you know? Right. And, if, and if you just happen to go like, Hey, uh, CEO, you want to do this thing? You're like, yeah, sure. That'd be awesome. You know, it's, right. it's that same dynamic. It's like on behalf of the internet or at least all of LinkedIn, we're, yeah. we're, we're getting af af offended or worried ahead of time. <laughs> like, well, I think, you know, too, so committee kills, right? Like all great art, I think for the most part is a singular vision. And that's really weird in marketing. Like if I was to come up with a huge idea and go to the CEO of Coke and he's like, yup, that's amazing. We're going to print. That's something that would never, ever happen, right? It has to go through a million different things. And that's Coke. What shocks me though, is like small to mid sized businesses are not restrained necessarily by anything. Like they don't really have a brand. They might think they have a brand, but they don't. You could do something that's creative and just test it. It doesn't have to be your entire campaign. It doesn't have to define who you are, but like just do some interesting things. Experiment. Don't be afraid to fail. And I think they'd be happy with the results. You know, all of the great ads that you can think of are entertaining. They make you cry. Like the Budweiser ads with the dogs and the horses had nothing to do with beer, but you walk away going, ah, teared up because a little pony has a friend now whatever it doesn't matter <laughs> you know but it made you feel some the stuff right. we're doing now is like almost it has to be created to to blend in to be white noise it must because it's not possible that people think that this shit that's on linkedin is clickable or you know like oh, oh yeah i don't get it but i think it is i think it's a weird dynamic that happens that I don't know what shifts and it's not just video. It's not just LinkedIn. It's not yeah. like, you know, it, it, this thing happens where we know what we, what we respond to as audience members, what we really like and all that. But then as soon as we sit down to at that blank page or whatever, it, what comes out is the safest, blandest. And I think maybe, maybe part of the answer is, the folks who aren't marketers, right? They're trying to do this for their business, especially smaller business, right? They don't have the constraints, but they also don't have the creative, just experience. Like that's not their job, right? But they're trying to market themselves. Yeah. And yeah. they're, they're trying to- so, it was, it's, it's multifactorial. Like there's a million issues that go into why marketing sucks. I think part of it is like, I always equate this is it's a probably a stupid analogy, but it's like the 2008 mortgage crisis. Like, all right, there was predatory lending, but there was dumb, dumb borrowing too. Like no income, no asset verification loans. Like it's dumb to take those, 
but it's dumb to sign up for one knowing you can't pay the mortgage, right? So they're dumb, you're dumb, everyone's dumb is terrible. I feel like with marketing, like, okay, agencies are doing the best work, internal creatives or even through your creatives because that's really weird online. No one's really creative that's a marketer, but it's not as if the marketing team's putting out great work and the client's shutting it down or the client's demanding great creative work and the agency can't do it. I just don't think it's creativity is being considered anymore. I just think it's sort of like you, you get a Shutterstock image, you put like a blue filter over it, overlay some text and put click here. And that's what marketing is. <laughs> and, you know? So, yeah. But, I, but it's in our heads now. Like nobody goes back to Ogilvy or George Lois and goes, this, this is what we should be doing. Wildly creative shit that gets people's attention. You know? I, I don't Oh, yeah. So I don't think, I think it's on us. I think it's on them. I think it's on the industry as a whole. It's like we forgot what it should be, which is you can't get anyone to do anything until you get their attention first. And, and yeah. everyone skipped that step. Button color doesn't yeah. matter, ultimately. Like, it just, like, we went really granular and we forgot the big picture, which is you got to stand out somehow. Yeah, just because we we can get that granular and and, and discover the nuance. It's just like our brains go right to that nuance, right? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I need to... Yeah. Right. Well, as soon as you could measure marketing, which is really, the, I think, the ad, when, once the internet got involved, we forgot, we threw the baby out of the bed. We're like, no, you know what? We don't create to just get, get them out of here. They don't matter. We can measure everything now. We don't need you. And I think maybe, hopefully, the tide's turning. Yeah. Because that's an interesting dynamic, too, that you bring up is that, like, the the other difference is uh, in testing and stuff like a lot of times the the lack of maybe production value and budget spent, y- you know, still generates this amazing result. But the, you know, and then we hear that result and we think, oh, I don't really have to right. make any effort at all. And, yeah. and, and, they, and again, they, they make that giant leap where, whereas, yeah, it's lower production quality, maybe somebody holding their phone, but it was really creative. There was a, a genius idea in that moment. And, and this is why, too, I think we're sort of hopefully in the beginning of some sort of golden age of video. Because here's the thing. 50 years ago, if you told you know the, the guy down the street that he could have commercials and people would watch them, you go, yeah, for 50 grand a commercial, I got to go to ABC, I got to buy time. You know, the whole dynamic. But we understand that these talkies, right, these little movies we're making, we're making one right now, get people's attention. But they used to be cost prohibitive, time or whatever. It was a huge... Now, we can all do them. Plus, we're used to low production value. Like, you know... With the Zoom thing and people doing it, Vaynerchuk's always ha- has his phone. It doesn't have to be polished. It's almost better if it isn't. Because here's the thing, one $500,000 commercial isn't going to do as much as you with your phone every day, just by the nature of the internet, right? Because you got to put out shit constantly and always be there and have brand salience. It's much easier and smarter and better, I think, to have low production. I mean, not trash. Don't do it on a razor from 15 years ago. But everyone has a pretty good camera in their pocket. You know, so yeah, it's just that personality. Oh yeah. It's just that effort and intentionality going into it. And so talk to me about the agencies you have and, and your approach and what you're kind of doing right now. But you know, even, even before then, what you, what got you into this crazy wild marketing biz <laughs> aspect? Well, and <laughs> I was unemployed. I think that's, is that everybody's, I got laid off, I, know, I get laid off at some thing selling something. And then, um, I had a hookup and he, uh, he introduced me to a friend and um, the guy was owned a digital marketing agency and this was like in 2011. So now this shit was new and exciting. I didn't, I didn't know it was all going to be spreadsheets. Um, but he was, uh, he was an interesting guy and he, I was his first full-time employee. He, uh, we got up to like 13, but the, the second guy that joined full-time, eventually the original owner decided to move <laughs> away from digital marketing and buy a bonsai nursery, a bonsai tree nursery, which sounds... Ridiculous, and it is. But uh, he took off like five years ago, uh, sold the company to us. So I think what hurts my soul is I have an agency that does boring shit like SEO and PPC and marketing automation and everything that digital marketing is, and it pays the bills you know, really well. So it kind of hurts my soul that the boring stuff works really well. But eventually, you know, like I said, I want to be... Here's the other thing. If I was the greatest marketer in the world, it's not like being the greatest guitar player in the world. I don't have to deal with Jimi Hendrix, you know what I mean, or any of the Beatles. Like, if I'm the greatest marketer in the world, I'm going to be David Ogilvy. Nobody even knows who that is, you know? But the Ogilvy and the Loises and the Sutherlands, like, those who I, that's what I think we as marketers should be. We should do art that gets people to buy stuff. And it should be really exciting. We should get nervous. It should be fun. It should be ambitious. And I don't think traditional digital marketing is any of those things, you know? 
Um, so yeah, I started it, Offensively Creative as an offshoot to try to find people that want to do interesting shit and, you know, do interesting shit. Yeah, and you have been too, which is which is great. You've been doing your own stuff. Like, yeah, it, that's that's the thing. And before we get into to some of that, like, I want to hammer that point home too. It isn't that the SEO, the PPC, the stuff right. that's paying the bill. Like, it it doesn't mean that's bad. Yeah. But when you can combine that, yeah, with stuff somebody actually wants to look at, if right. it wasn't an ad, they would love to enjoy. They would enjoy it, right? <laughs> yeah, you can combine those things. It's yeah, it's style and substance. Like my my favorite baseball player is Manny Ramirez. I'm a Red Sox fan. Manny was out of his mind. He also happens to be one of the greatest hitters of all time. But the long baggy pants, the hair, or the pissing inside the green monster. He had no lore about him. You know what I mean? There was a lot of style. But at the same time, he's the first guy to show up and the last guy to leave. You know, so like he had style and substance, and that's what makes a great brand and profitability. You know, and I think everyone has just forgotten the style piece, which is as humans kind of weird. No, I think we like, we know we like that kind of stuff. Look at our hairs, right? Now, call back. Exactly. <laughs> but it is, it, it's so funny because we do, we, we disconnect our own human experience yeah. of what we respond to. And I think there's a level of, oh, I, I could never do that. Right. So I'm just going to be in this safe little box. I encountered yeah. it when I, you know made movies back in the day, you know, independent yeah. movies in Dallas, Texas, it was that crowd of folks who were just like, well, we're not, you know, we couldn't ever make anything that looks professional in Hollywood. So we're not even going to try. We're going to go so far the other way. It was just like, well, here's six examples of what we just did last week. So let's have this conversation because you, you can, you can do so much more yeah. right to your point that you were just making. We have this technology in our pocket. We can make these things that yeah. it's just, it's exciting because it's new too. like we you could show your brand and your personality right now today because it's affordable and it's you listen you could have done it 50 years ago but then for all the problems that you you know that we talked about time money now you can and you should here's the other thing too and we've talked about this but like we're not talking because we're talking about linkedin about listen we don't need to get on saturday night live even though it's terrible these days you need to be 10 degrees off center be vaguely entertaining on LinkedIn and you will be the most entertaining thing on LinkedIn. But since we're talking about business, it's like as soon as you walk through that door or your office at home, you shove a stick up your ass and you become Johnny Business Guy, which is so weird because I talk to these people and I've seen, like every time I talk to a prospect, I'll go see if they have YouTube videos, if they've done interviews, I just want to get a feel of who they are. The person I talk to is not the person who they are on camera, which is enough, and the person they, they present to be on camera is always boring and terrible, exactly like everybody else. But that's not who they actually are. Why do we hide who we are in the B2B world? It's shocking. Unless you're like a raging drunk and an asshole, like obviously hide that. But <laughs> yeah. most of us have some semblance of a personality. Yeah, keep that. It could go a long way. Yeah, keep that stuff to yourself. But uh... <laughs> Not everybody's great. A lot of people suck. And a lot of people are naturally boring. But there's a certain segment of people in business who have personalities. They should show them. I mean, personal brands are huge, right? Look at Ronald McDonald, the average clown <laughs> until he invented a cheeseburger. I think I don't watch the movie, but I assume that's it. Yeah, that's the, yeah. I, think I read that review on Rotten Tomatoes or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it is. It's, that's great. Uh, so let's, let's walk through, because I think that's a, that's a great aspect of it too, is that when people think of creating this content, getting creative and all that, that it is this, I've got to go be this other person or come up with some wild idea and jump out of a plane or something like, no, it's just, it really is just a purposeful, you know, representation of yourself. Get that help if you need on, you know, you know, not having a blank page or whatever it is and, yeah. you know, <laughs> jump in there and create some videos, but this is great. So if, for those who haven't seen it, five nice. urban lunch show, those things. <laughs> the biggest thing on the internet. Thing. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. Exactly. For the few people who haven't. For the people that haven't seen Titanic. <laughs> right. <laughs> Talk That's to me about crazy. that, Damien. Because you're, it, it, at least in all of this too, you are walking your talk, right? You are creating yeah, this content. Right. I'm sober <laughs> now, but yeah. So the, so the, the thing with Fiber Bellagio, it's a clear ripoff of Hot Ones, which is, I think is ingenious. Like, you should have a gimmick. There's a billion interview shows, but this guy decided to do something that's been done a billion times and add hot sauce. And right off the bat, the 
it it's it skews the way that the, your guests like they they don't have the rote memorized uh, memorized answers that they gave on Larry King whatever else they're eating hot sauce it's fuck with them it it's jarring it's it's shaking the the, the structure of the average day right so all of a sudden they become somebody else they become who they really probably are a couple hot wings in they're sweating they're laughing they're having a good time and that's a, that's a great interview because it was mildly different right so i send people bourbon samples in the, in the mail which i probably shouldn't do uh, but then we drink them together. I'd read the pretentious tasting notes. And then I ask them questions that they probably haven't been asked for, uh, before in a business setting, like, you know, the five favorite bands, five favorite movies, death row meal. And I think it's human. The whole thing is humanizing corporate America through the magic and power of brown booze and stupid questions. But it's dumb and I'm getting people a little low buzzed, but it's fun and it's entertaining. They can't wait to see the clips and they can't wait to share them. So just, you know, slightly twisting the structure of the average interview changes the dynamic incredibly. So when I tell people that they should be on video an interview shows a really easy thing to do, but just don't do the same shit everyone else is doing. Do something else. I do little goofy pop-ups, you know, it, I think it keeps them moving. That's another like pop-up video. I ripped off that idea. Um, but I think everybody should have a little gimmick, a little talk about ability. You know, so I'm not saying you have to be a stand up in your videos, but interview somebody, steal their audiences, because if you hashtag and add correctly, the algorithm likes it and then do something a little weird. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you've done that, too. So that's the other piece that I've watched that evolution a little bit, too, from what you're doing and then what you're doing for your clients, because that's another bucket that people get into a little bit is like. I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't, you know, right. host a five bourbon lunch show or yeah. be hilarious like <laughs> like so American Paul. sweetheart. You know? <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. I think the, the beauty of video is it's, it's living, breathing content. So you're not hiring an agency to write your blogs, right? We don't know what to think. We were just Googling. We're Chad G. Right? What you're doing is you're going to do a show and then you're going to see yourself and go, oh, I should have done this. I you're going to get better. And then you're going to like, if you're funny, the funny's going to naturally come out. Or if you're super passionate about what you're asking about, that passion is going to It's just a more organic form of content. And it's, I think, just great across the board. It's more engaging for your audience. It shows your passion, your brand. So yeah, you don't have to do the Five Bourbon Lunch Show. You can do a traditional thing. We can do a little bit of pop-ups to make it funny. We could do a straight interview show and you can grow into whatever it needs to be. But you should be on camera. You, the yeah, because- I mean, we know we're here. Exactly. <laughs> like, you're right. I should be on camera. You no, know, we should I gotta be. go. Yeah, we should interview each other. <laughs> but yeah, and, and I've watched a couple of examples uh, that you've done for your clients too, which is great because it's like, it's not this giant, you know, craziness that you do for your own that, yeah. again, they're magnificent. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you've got, you're kind of holding their hand in, in terms of being there to, you know, Yes, your client's interviewing a guest of theirs, but you're there. You got the safety net for them a little bit. And then it is just sort of bringing those to life at the end, right? So it's not just this question, answer, question, answer. Number one, a little bit creative on the question asking. So they aren't just, you know, tell me about when you were a child. Why did you do, you know, just going into that. that, You're going to make like a fart noise or something. The magic (laughs) is production. That's what I want to lean on with everybody because live, we talked about this. Live is horrifying. I don't want to do that at all. I want to make us look as good as possible after, you know? Yeah. So, you know, you're enjoying this. We know you are. You're, you're loving this interview right now. It's (laughs) because, It's sure. because there's editing going. Of this course. is a seven-hour so, interview. Know I'm hands. I know your hands are soft and tender. At the end of this, I'm going <laughs> to. That's right. So you know, we get screamed at by people like us, right? Um, saying video, 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 but it, it, it really is the thing. And I think we are in a in a time where too bad if you don't like it. Let like, let's figure this thing out. But yep. what's the what's that that bigger take that leap why do they really need to do this right now and what's the what's that opportunity well i mean just youtube for example is the world's second largest search engine right like we love videos I, at this point if you have to fix your dryer whatever would you read something or you watch a video like we only like video is just permeating every aspect of it, right all the time all the time so you should do it as a business owner particularly small and medium-sized businesses a lot of people still aren't doing it like it's scary somehow listen 18-year-old storm the beaches of Normandy to fight Nazis with guns. You can get in front of a camera, right? I know it's scary. <laughs> What's the, it's relatively scary. 
right? But a lot of people are afraid of it. I think a lot of people think it's still probably expensive, which, you know, it's not free, but it's cheap. Uh, the, the production value can be pretty high and you don't have to spend a lot of money. So I just think because you can and your competition isn't, you should be, you know? It's just a yeah. thing, like, it, it's, again, one of those things, like, we know we like humor and stuff. We know we like sex appeal and magic. Video affords you the opportunity to do some of that. But even if you don't do anything, it's still engaging. It's a really engaging medium. More so oh, than yeah. a blog, more so than a white paper, more so than an ad. It's just, it, in, in, it, you will show some personality, even by accident. The way you could hide it in an email, eventually you walk <laughs> on camera enough, you're going to say something interesting or funny or, you know. <laughs> It's going to happen by accident, which is another just true good. Oh yeah, well, and that's the that's the, the the fun part too. I've been trying to get myself to do just an audio podcast, you know, for a while, just whatever reason. But I keep coming back to every show I start. I I, I make sure I do it on video, just because you can create every other piece of yep. <laughs> media that that you Thanks want from holding, that I can first. That obvious answer, yes. It's also <laughs> you, right. You do the transcript, and it's a blog. You can do the audio, and it's a blog. I mean, it's just it gives you a lot of. Stuff. Yeah, sport. yeah, for sure. So I, I want to dig into um, some of the fun stuff that that's coming. So I know you've been doing the the interviews for folks. Yeah, you've been doing your own content. You've been in, doing interviews for folks where you know then you take that, cut that up, bring it to life, kind of like what we talked about. Then you and I are are jumping in with sort of a hybrid version, a, a little bit of what I've done for folks in terms yeah. of you know interviewing people for sixty to ninety minutes and creating you know, 48 pieces of content right out of that. Um, Which I got to say the most genius idea anyone has ever had ever. It was a, <laughs> completely my idea. No one else yeah, has no. ever. Weren't inspired by anybody, but yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what I, I, I love, you know, it's been out there kind of put all that together, but now teaming up with you to sort of bring this stuff to, to life again, just, just a little, little sauce on there, a little bit of, uh, yeah. you know, Oh, make this thing alive. Yeah. A little salt, so, a little heat, a little something. Just, you have to be just, just 10 degrees different. And I think it'll make a huge difference. And I think something like this is, here, here's what I've learned about life too. A lot of times you, you're attracted by the big shiny lore thing, but you don't really want that thing. Like cars, right? Car commercials, you're always driving these, uh, you know, these closed circuit things through the mountains and snowing. You're never going to do that. You want 50 degrees left of that, right? You just want to make sure you kind of look cool in your new car. It gets you to A to B, but you were attracted by the, all that goofy shit, but the illogical shit, you know, the, the stuff that's funny or exciting. So yes, I think we should be doing this. And I think the, the thing that you've made is perfect. It's a perfect vehicle to get in because you interview, you're very professional, right? So I, I get them with the big goofy stuff with the pop-ups and the perfect <laughs> arts jokes. And then they go, all right, but he's out, is he out of his mind? Yes. But my, my guy here, he's way better. He's a professional. He's going to make his stuff look incredible. It's going to be entertaining and it's going to get likes and views and more importantly, money, right? Like we're, we're in advertising and marketing to get attention and eventually becomes revenue. So. Yeah. That's and that's, that's the biggest thing. Like you said that earlier in the interview, but I, I, I just, if, if there's anything to scream out there to everybody from the rafters, it is that idea that you can't do anything until you've got their attention. Right. Right. You, you've got to figure out this way to separate yourself, get past this, you know, oh, I'm going to just put my, you know, post out on LinkedIn today and do, check the box and do all of this. I, I guess that's better than nothing. Um, but How much? sometimes not, you know, <laughs> like I try to shake people into, into, into getting away from this horrible sameness. Right. I, I think that's, sometimes that's worse than obscurity. If nobody knows you, but you haven't done anything, well, at least you didn't waste any time, right? Yeah, no. If you're going through all this effort and yeah. you just look like the the beige Camry of LinkedIn, like then what are you doing? Right. And so here's the thing. It's possible. Beige Camrys, they've, they've sold a ton, right? But the other thing hasn't. So try the other thing. You know, I, I know creativity can be hard and it can be scary, but Jesus Christ, how many beige Camrys do we need to your point? Like the opportunity, the lower hanging fruit is not to be a beige Camry now. Everything else is, you know? So don't, <laughs> don't do the obvious logical thing. If, if, oh, yeah. if your problems were solved by logic, you would have been able to solve them. Right? Right. So something a little illogical to have a show that's a little bit funny or something, you know? 
You know? Oh yeah. And you know, I want to assure people too. And, the, and that's the, that's the thing that I like. I like from your approach to when you did the interview stuff. Um, and I like this new combined version too, because it's, they're, they're sort of checking the box of content they need to create for the month. Oh, that's great. But we're actually bringing this thing to life. And number one, you don't have to start from a blank page. You've got yeah. us to be there and, <laughs> you know, go, right. okay, here's what we're going to talk about. You know, it kind of guide through that process yeah. kind of, pull out that and you know hold you a little accountable of of like okay is that really what you want to talk about come on let's let's yeah, live in their up. hands you're in the hands of a professional right so you go and you ask questions that make sense and then maybe that they've seen beforehand and they can do multiple takes they don't have to be afraid it's not live we all hate live right so <laughs> at the end of it they're gonna get 48 pieces of professionally produced content and that's a ton especially when they've been able to hide probably behind you know agencies writing their blogs and they're like get out there just get out there like it's going to be exciting too something you can show your kids like no one's going to read what you wrote you never write it anyway we did but you know what i mean like you can show people have you seen my show i do that all the time i send it in dms when i you know it's just eh, it's exciting it's different that's and that's the other that's the other part of it too that um people people get it right they get oh okay i can talk for an hour or so and you guys are going to go make this stuff then it's okay what I got all this stuff. Like, what do I do with it? You know? And that's yeah. the other, other part of it that, that, that we can help with too, is that. As if approach. we thought the whole thing through. Yes. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. So if. Almost. <laughs> if they show up for an hour, we got everything else, right? We professionally produce everything. And if you'd like, we can professionally post everything as well. The right times, yep. the right hashtags, the right ads, the right blurbs. Oh, genius. I got to say, we're a couple of geniuses. Yes, that's really all you need to know. I don't know why we didn't just start the but interview off with that. We'll <laughs> yeah, just subliminal. <laughs> if you pause this at just the right time, you'll see that subliminal message in there in between frames. And we could do that for you. <laughs> we are not beige Camrys, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. That's what the subliminal message says. We're not beige Camrys. Yeah. All right. So where do people go? Who needs this? Eric Ryan. <laughs> And where do they go to um, find out about I think, it? Here's what I like. I like to go after founders and CEOs because they're not going anywhere. I want the face of the franchise to be somebody who's really invested, right? And usually those people are great because if you're a founder, it's you, there was some rebel in you at some point. I know a lot of times you get stomped out from years ago and you shit you didn't expect to or want to when you started a business. Like you thought it was going to be all, you know, martinis and smart ideas, but it's not. It's payroll and other awful shit. But- there's a rebel in there somewhere. Like, no one starts a business to do things the same way that everybody else does, right? That just gets snuffed out over time. So I like owners. And I like owners because of that. And also, they don't want to, they, they'll say yes to things, right? So they're going to do it. They're going to make the decision to do it. There's fire and passion. They're the best. I don't want to see them, oh, they're going to be gone in three years. So I think small to medium-sized businesses, because listen, again, we're not going to get Coke or Red Bull or Apple. I think they're doing their own thing. But if you're reasonably successful and reasonably smart and passionate and a little bit rebellious and, you, and you're capable of having a personal brand that you know moves the needle and makes you money, then you should be doing it. You know? I love it. Yeah. Where do they go to find out more? Find out more about you, agency, all that fun stuff? I think you should pop it up on the screen, but it's offensivelycreative.com. That's the agency. It's a good name, right? I came up with it. So love it. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, man. Thanks so much for being on. No. I'm excited. Thank you. I'm excited you're out there fighting the good fight. And uh, I'm excited lit. to. We're going to win it together. <laughs> That's right. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. If you want help creating authority building video content or even a client generating show of your own, go to medialeadsco.com and let's connect. I'll talk to you soon on the next Strategy and Action.